Hey guys, how's it going? This is going to be part three of the Mercedes SSK 1929 kit car build. And uh, I got two more videos prior to this. I'll put the links in the description. And uh, in a nutshell, this was a neighbor's kit car that he bought in 1986. Uh, got part way on it and then just stopped. And so the car was never built. So this is probably the only one in the world uh, that exists. Uh, this was made by Fiberfab in Minnesota. Uh, kit car was delivered in 1986 and was never built. So it's kind of like a big puzzle. But uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover all the seals, the wheel bearings. In the previous video, I tore everything apart, got everything painted, cleaned up, and then we're going to put it all back together again. Get it all running, the brakes, bearings, seals. Uh, drive shaft, all that's going to be complete, and then we'll also pull out the transmission. But uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And this is kind of a milestone. This will be my 70th video since COVID hit last year, and uh, pushing close to 2,000 subscribers. So appreciate everybody uh, supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription button, ring the bell for notifications, and then. Uh, for you guys that are watching, hit the like button. If you like the video, please like. That helps YouTube see that, uh, you know, that things are moving along with, with my content and helps promote it more up the ladder, you know, with the other videos, all the other billion videos that are out there on YouTube, pretty much. So let's get to it. A lot of the parts came in. You saw all the boxes I had in the last video at the very end, but uh, new wheel cylinders, uh, new uh, main hose from the rear differential to the frame so I can run uh, NICOP uh, brake line up to the master cylinder, new shoes ready to go. So I have everything laid out, new hoses for the front calipers. Um, so today's project, and I won't record any of this, this is boring, but uh, is to uh, clean up the backing plates for the rear axle and you see this is where it was leaking all this crud on here um here's the new calipers i have new calipers but i need to take the mounting bracket off maybe i'll show you how to do that that's pretty simple the couple clips and uh my secret weapon that i use for degrease and i found out a long time ago uh, if you buy degreasers from the auto parts store there's tons of them you got gunk you got all that stuff none of that stuff works great but my secret is once you get everything, all the bulk scraped off on the engine, the transmission, or whatever, in this case, the backing plates, just use Easy Off Oven and Grill Cleaner. It works amazing. So just spray it on. I use a cheap disposable paintbrush and just brush it in, get any of the residual oil, and then when you're all done letting it soak for a while, hit it with a hose, let it dry, and you're ready to do your rust converter and put some paint on. Uh, I'd never seen this one. This is the pro commercial use, but just a regular easy off. You buy it, your local grocery store works great. So keep a couple of hand cans on that on hand and um, we're good to go. Um, also need to clean up the axles. This is where the rear axle seal was leaking. You see how moist it is. I'll get all that scrubbed up. Thing is the bearings on the rear axles on this rear end and also like your nine inch Fords uh, these are permanently sealed bearings, so you can't take them apart and pack them with grease uh, like you can the front spindles, where I'll show you that, how to do that with a grease packer. But, uh, but these are in good shape. If you move them around, there's no gritty noise or no resistance. So these are in good shape. Um, so these are going to go back on. I'm not going to touch it. If you need to replace it, you get the new wheel bearings, and then you're going to have to have them pressed on. So I have a press there that I use quite a bit. I could press a new pair on, but these were good shape, but these are pressed on. So if you pull your axles out, get new, your new wheel bearings for the rear, and uh, you're gonna have to take it, maybe if you don't have a press, take it to a shop um, that does this kind of work and they'll press them on for you. But anyway, this thing's good and moist where it was leaking. Uh, I'll get that all cleaned up and get everything painted. I'm trying to get everything done for tomorrow um, for reassembly. Time to start putting the rear end back together. I got all the drums, all the backing plates, everything, the axles over here, uh, all cleaned up uh, with my oven cleaner, which and everything's rust converted uh, with the Coro seal. I'll put the link in the description. Showed that in my last video, and then everything has a good coat of paint on it. 
Uh, so everything's ready to go. Next item is to get the seals out of the rear axle right in here. And I have the new seals that I sourced. And for this type of seal where I can't get in with a, a normal seal remover like this, uh, this is a handy tool to have. I'll use those on the front rotors. I'll show you how to get the seals out with that. Uh, I can't get it in here. It's not going to fit. So what I have is a kind of like a dent puller you'd have for doing body work on a car slide hammer um, that's in here in the weight. You just basically pull apart and I'll show you that. Uh, but it has all these little attachments. And I'll put the link in the Amazon links in the description for both tools. This one, this is used the majority of the time, but also this one, they're not expensive. Suggest you pick it up. But this has got a hook on the end that goes on the end of the slide hammer and you can get up in there and pull on the seal, uh, kind of work your way around. And then they also give you this, which I've used. Um, the screws on the end of the slide hammer and it's got all these little like wing arm attachments that I can put in here like so and it has this pin so you just put the pin right through the hole and that holds it in and then uh, you've got a puller like a little hook on both sides of this and it's pretty slick and then they give you this tool here um, so if you need to pull races out, seals, suggest you have one of these on hand, but definitely, absolutely, if you're doing some car work, wrenching on stuff, have this one. And again, the links are in the description for both tools. Uh, let's go into time warp on the GoPro. The seal came out pretty easy with, again, the dent puller. <laughs> and uh, flushed it out with brake clean. Um, this is going to be the surface inside here where the seal is going to go. I got that good and clean. Um, this is the outside area where the pressed on axle bearing is going to go into this area. But this is the main seal here. I do have a new seal. And to put that in, to make it easy, yeah, you could probably tap it in with some some pipes or you know sockets that you might have laying around but uh, I have a bearing seal and a race installation for bearing races tool here and it gives you different sizes and then uh, pretty much a handle you screw it on and then you can hit it in so it goes in evenly um, so you don't want to kink it to the side so what I want to do now is find what size is going to work that one's going to be too big Let's go down one size. I think this will probably be the ticket for it. So let's look at that. No, it's even too big. Let's go down to the smallest one. And you want to make sure that you're hitting the metal around the edge and not just hitting on the rubber. So it looks like this one's going to squeeze on there. Absolutely perfect. So I'll go ahead and put the handle on. It's just a screw on the end, a bolt, and put it in through the hole. Kind of hard to hold the camera here while I'm doing this, but uh, kind of get the idea, and then I'll drive it in. Back to time warp. axles in you saw me just tap it easy with the sledgehammer to knock it in it shouldn't take much force to get that in there um, and that's it on that so the other seal now I need to pull out is the rotor and I'm going to use the other seal tool here one with the hooks on it and I want to get just under the lip hopefully you can see that And if it needs a little per persuasion, you can hit it with the hammer just a little bit. And then you're going to have to pry it. Um, that all clean and 
just pull it out easy and there it is and it looks like it's in really good shape I'll clean the grease up and uh, get this reinstalled with a new seal on to the front bearings so here's the front bearings out of the rotor these are the outer bearings and uh, these are the inners and uh, they look all in pretty good shape and what we're going to do is repack them so wipe off all the grease you can and then i have this bearing packing tool which is going to flush out all the old grease that's still in it and uh, put new grease in so here's the grease i like using uh, full synthetic valvoline and it's number two grease and this is the only grease i use and it works fantastic um, doesn't turn to liquid like some of the red grease does and uh, I also have a, a video on redoing seals and bearings on my uh, travel trailer um, that will apply to any of the uh, trailers you might own. So I'll put a link in the description for that video, but that goes into pretty good detail on the trailer brakes, everything, and re-greasing the bearings, repacking them. But pretty much you get this grease packer, and I'll put a link in the Amazon link in the description, and I'm going to place the bearing in the center and apply pressure and it's going to push up through little holes all the grease that I preloaded in the bottom here from this can and it's going to push it right up through the bearing flush out all the old stuff and put the new stuff in so let's go ahead and do it And here's the inner bearing, all flushed out. You can see that around there, so I'll take this grease, get rid of it. It's the old stuff that came out. And uh, the bearings are done, ready to go back in. So let's get a good coat of grease. This is the inner bearing. And I like uh, really looking at the race, make sure it's not scored, no heat marks on the bearings. But uh, put a good coat of grease, including where the grease seal goes, down in the race. And then we're ready to drop in the repacked bearing. Next, we'll get the seal in. And it's ready to go back in again. And we're going to slightly tap it around the edge. around with your finger and that one is done and I'm going to put some more grease around where it's going to go on to the spindle right in here and I'll grease the spindle too before it goes on make sure that seal is good and lubed all right this rotor is ready to go back on there's my rotor ready to go back on. Here's a spindle. I want to take some lacquer thinner on a rag and I want to clean this shoulder back in here because that's where the seal is going to end up. So make sure that is really good and clean. No ridges, just scrape across it with your fingernail. See if you detect any ridges and if you do, you might have to replace the spindle or they have speedy sleeves. It could go on here um, with a, like an oversized seal that works really good get that really good and clean and again I don't have any ridges and the next thing I want to do is put a little bit of grease on there so get my Valvoline synthetic grease and I want to grease this up really good And then I like putting some on the spindle itself, especially right in here. This is where the, out, the outer bearing is going to ride. Get it all buttered up. 
Okay, so now we're ready to put the uh, rotor on. So you want to try to balance it so you're not gouging into the seal, that it goes on nice and easy. So try to center it best you can. Get it on there. And you're going to feel that seal in the back hit and go over that shoulder. If everything goes okay, yeah, you'll just feel it. Just kind of wiggle it on. And that's all you need to do. Next up is... I'm going to put more grease on the inner race, or the outer race rather. Make sure that's good and buttered up. And now we take the outer bearing, kind of tilt this up a little bit, and just ease it on there. And we are on. And next thing is the thrust washer. And my parts here. And you'll notice the thrust washer is going to be keyed. So you want to take and line up the notch. In this case, it's on the side over here. This is going to be your thrust washer. Put that on. And last is the nut. Spin it on hand tight. Now what you're going to do is snug this up. You're not going to torque this down. Because if you torque it down, that's going to create problems with the bearings overheating and it's going to be a problem. So what I like doing is taking the channel locks here, get onto the nut, and just turn it, turn it, get the bearings seated you tighten it up against that thrust washer and keep spinning it all the grease is going to be squeezing out of the bearings keep spinning it and you'll feel it snug up And just snug it. So we're good. The most important step is, this is a keeper to keep that nut from coming loose. You want to make sure you get this on here. Put that on there and then you get your carter pin. Get new ones because usually the old ones are all mangled. And you can see the size difference too. They had cotter pins that look like paper clips. These are the wrong size. This is correct. So you want to make sure you get the right size. Find out where the hole's at. Right there is where it's at. And this is going to keep that nut from spinning loose. And then once you find that, just bend over the ends. Just put a pair of needle noses, something like that. Grab onto the long end. Bend it around because it has to clear the grease cap when it goes back on. Bend it up and in. The same thing with the other one. Bend it down. And now you're good to go again. are all put back in place. Uh, I didn't record it because I just couldn't get any proper camera angles um, to show you what's going on. I will include a detailed video from another YouTube channel uh, in the description if you wanted to see how this goes together. But 
So parts of this was a real biatch to do. A um, few choice words, um, but I got it together and uh, I didn't want to get demonetized. So anyway, let's move on to the uh, front brake calipers and get those done. And the brakes are going to be done other than uh, just running the brake lines. Time for the front brake calipers. Uh, here's the old ones, and uh, I might have been able to reuse them, but uh, you know this was from 1980, and seals typically uh, get hardened up and crusty, and uh, if there's any corrosion, they'll seize, and the piston won't come out to compress, or they'll come out so far and they won't release, and it'll just burn up the brakes. So uh, for about 50 bucks, I was able to get these new uh, pistons and uh, back unit, but I have to take off the mounting plate right here um, that goes on with the two bolts onto the front end. And in the kit, along with this, you get the uh, new slide and pin keeper, and then also the uh, brake shoe uh, retaining clips. Calipers are on. The rear end is all rebuilt, complete, brakes, seals, everything, new oil. Uh, next thing is to put these hoses on. Uh, the old hoses were pretty, pretty bad shape. So uh, I got new hoses. The one thing I'm going to have to do is put tabs where it mounts to the frame somewhere uh, on the end here. It's kind of like a tab with a 5 8 inch hole. And then you push it in, and then a keeper clamp, like a piece of U, piece of steel, goes in there. And then I flare the brake line fittings with an inverted flare, and it should be good. So uh, the last thing on the calipers is to uh, go ahead and put these in. And I think the next thing I'm going to do today is get this transmission out and see what the clutch pack looks like, um, throughout bearing and such. Um, so I have no idea. It's very easy to get it out uh, without the body on rather than dropping it up and down below with the body on. So I'm going to get to that next. Right, the transmission's out. The face clutch face looks good. Flywheel looks good, nice and smooth, no scoring. Um, the clutch is gone. The rivets uh, just about showing uh, on both sides. So I'm gonna order up a new clutch pack, which includes the clutch, the pressure plate, the uh, the throwout bearing and the pilot bearing that goes in the center for the transmission. Also, I uh, pulled out the transmission. I'll get it all cleaned up. It looks pretty good except for front seals leaking, which I have a new front seal for it. And I'll get the uh, replacement throwout bearing. And uh, this will be as good as new when I get done with it. Yep, transmission seal's been leaking for decades probably. See, it's all gooped up in here and uh, just all the residue. The throw rod bearing is grinding when I spin it. That's not a good sign. And throw rod lever kind of looks okay. But uh, get all this cleaned up and what I'm going to do is take the four bolts out here and that cover pops off and I have a new seal. Two-piece seal. No, it's a one-piece seal that goes down in there. So I'll get that pulled out and get this all cleaned up. And I uh, got a clutch pack due at O'Reilly's here in the next hour. So I should be right on track. Okay. 
Today's project, uh, I got our transmission all cleaned up and degreased. And uh, what's amazing is I've been using the uh, Easy Off oven cleaner for a while and it's pretty toxic, but a friend of mine suggested super clean the foaming. And uh, I used it on the transmission last night. And pretty amazing stuff. I mean, just spray it on, you can actually see it dissolve in the grease and grit and grime. Um, so for detailing your engine, periodically um, or degreasing a project. Uh, this stuff's fantastic. I'll put the link in, uh, for Amazon in the description down below. And then also I like using the Corusil rust converters. Those that follow my channel know that I really like this stuff. And this is an Amazon link also in my description. But uh, take the rusty metal and just paint it on. It's like milk. Don't have to be too careful on how you get it applied. And after a while, you start seeing here, it'll turn to black, let it dry. It is water-based, so you can wash your paintbrush up in just, just tap water in the sink. But it just works really well. Um, I use this on my patio furniture, steps, outdoor stuff that's rusting, car builds, and really works good. Transmission's all degreased, cleaned up, and looking pretty. Um, I'll eventually put some of my Corusil rust converter on the main body of the transmission once it's in, brush it on, and then that'll look nice. A uh, couple little details is that you saw the seal that I installed is actually in this hat. This hat comes off. You take the bell housing off, as you saw, take the four bolts, and these are 10 millimeter bolts pull this hat off and the seal's actually inside this ring in here. So I put a new seal on. One thing to note is when you put this hat back on, there's a little drain hole. You can see that uh, right there. Um, and you wanna make sure that's facing down. So the event, when your seal fails, not a matter of if it fails, it's when it's gonna fail, the oil is gonna come through this hat over the input shaft and hit that hole and drip down and that's what happened uh, and that's where all the oil was coming down the oil was blowing into the starter and coating the starter but you want the oil falling down back here rather than out the front here uh, if it goes out the front then it's going to be on your pressure plate and such so make sure you do that so here's the flywheel. In a manual transmission you're going to have a flywheel which has mass to it so the idea is that you want to give the engine some mass, some inertia, uh, so that when you shift and go into the next gear, uh, there's enough inertia going, momentum going, that'll help the transition. But this is a big chunk of steel on here. Uh, a couple of notes is that you want to look at the surface. In this case, my surface is like a mirror, so no issues. If you have a clutch where it went down to the rivets and you have score marks, most likely you can take this flywheel to a transmission shop. They can put it on a lathe and then turn it down, resurface the face on it. So you have a nice clean uh, surface for the new clutch. Also, you want to inspect the ring gear. Um, I've seen a lot of ring gears where they're all chewed up from the starter, not engaging properly and teeth are worn down. Also, if you take this perhaps to your local transmission shop, um, these ring gears are typically heated and pressed on. Um, and it's just friction holding them on so uh, you can also have that done But I'm going to take my flywheel off every motor that I've done uh, Every clutch I always take the flywheel off and replace the main seal uh, This one looks to be okay. It's not dripping excessive, but it's a little bit moist down in there So we'll take that off take a look at it also inside here. You have a uh, pilot bearing needle bearing that's inside there. You get a zoomed in look at that. Um, that needs to be pulled out and you get that in a new kit. So let's take a look at the clutch kit. So you can order a new clutch, um, but if you order a clutch pack, they call it, or in this case a clutch set, um, you're going to get a couple things. Some stop, disclaimer, deals in the carton. And uh, take a look. You're going to get that new pilot bearing, which I just talked about, and you definitely want to grease this up when you put it back in, and it looks like they do give you a little bit of grease down there. You're going to get that. You're also going to get the throw-out bearing, brand new. You definitely need to replace this. 
this thing is spinning billions of times and uh, eventually the bearings wear out. And then you get the clutch itself down in here. And this is your pressure plate with the springs and stuff. Um, and then actually the new clutch. Then you can see how much material I have left here uh, on a brand new clutch versus what I have. The most importantly, you have to use um, this alignment tool. So the idea is when you put this clutch plate on to the flywheel, you want this pin to go in and align it. And then after it's aligned, so you're not off center, put that in there. And then after that, you take your pressure plate and then bolt it onto the flywheel. And then when you're all done, pull this out and this clutch is perfectly lined on the flywheel and perfectly lined on the surface of the uh, pressure plate. You can see from years of the valve cover leaking, uh, I guess they didn't have a proper gasket in here and oil was also coming down from the valve cover, which is evident on the other side of the engine and stuff. So some leakage happened there. Upon further inspection, I think my oil leak right down here, there's no oil up in behind the crank. Um, the oil is actually coming from the oil pan itself. Um, there's a separate gasket that goes across here and that's where the weepage is at, but up underneath the uh, the mount here, it's it's totally dry. So that's where it's coming through. Time to put the clutch on. When you put the bolts back in, make sure you put Loctite and torque it down uh, appropriately. Just Google and look in some of the manuals for what the torques should be. So these are all installed, torqued down. I did replace the pilot bearing. In some cases, it's such a bear to get them out uh, with corrosion. You might have to leave them in. Anyway, use some good synthetic grease in there if you have to leave it, but I was able to replace it. And next is the clutch disc that's going to go on. And again, we're going to use the pilot tool to line it up. So put the pilot tool in between there like that, line it up, and uh, it's going to center it. And now the pressure plate goes on. And then also to the bolts, you want to lock tight those, which I did already. And this one has some pins to line up. So what you're going to do is take and line up the pins and the holes. Oh, when you put the flywheel on too, it's a balanced flywheel. So if you put it on and the holes don't line up, just keep rotating it till all the holes line up. Uh, it's intended to be that way. So... I need to find where my locating pins are at, like so. Put all those in, torque them down, and uh, time to put the transmission back in. And when you're all done, and this is all locked down, pull your pilot tool out, and you're good to go. Transmission's in for the second time. I'm sure somebody's typing away that uh, they noticed that the uh, shift arm wasn't installed and the throw out bearing, so I had to take the transmission out. Put it in and put it in for a second time. So, like my grandpa always said, do it two or three times until you get it right. So it's been a long day and I'm kind of losing it. So uh, anyway, all back together. Time to put the seal in the tail and get the drive shaft in. Just pulled off the motor mounts, jacked the front of the motor up. I already got the motor mount in the back on the transmission mount done. And uh, time to replace these ones. They're pretty cheap. They're like 25 bucks a piece, but uh, the bolt's on here. So here's the brackets. Uh, this is the driver's side, the passenger side here. And uh, it's got this heat shield on the side for the catalytic converter on the one side, but uh, you can see the rubber's all cracked. So. Got the new one uh, ready to go in, and I'll get that all bolted up and uh, bring you back a little bit later. As long as I'm in here doing the motor mounts, might as well replace the fuel pump right there. Uh, it's right in the front left driver's side. Uh, put the new one on. Um, this fuel pump 
has been pumping fuel since 1980. Um, and I know the diaphragm, there's like a diaphragm that moves up and down with a check valve that pumps the fuel. And I know that diaphragm most likely is probably cracked. So as long as I got it up, I might as well go ahead and change it out. I think this was like 25 bucks at O'Reilly. Uh, put a new one in and I'll do that right now. Get the hoses off, put this in and uh, I'm ready to lower it down. I got the motor mount back on and uh, the other side's done and ready to lower it back down and that'll finish up that project. Your typical mechanical fuel pump has an arm on it and a couple gaskets and it usually has two bolts. And if you could see them back in here, these are like half inch bolts. And that's all it holds it in. And then make sure you put the gaskets on. But the mechanical pump shoots in. Even your small block Chevys, the older ones have this uh, mechanical arm. And what this does is pulls up and down like this and presses a diaphragm. And that's what pumps the fuel. And then this rides on the crankshaft inside the motor or a push rod or something to that effect. And uh, that's how the fuel's pumped. The other thing you could do is bypass these. Um, I've done a lot of like Chevy motors and Ford motors where you do a block off plate. Uh, it's just a solid plate, bolts in there with gaskets, and then just put an electric fuel pump um, on the frame between the tank and the, uh, the motor. And that usually works really good too. New fuel pumps on, new hoses. Uh, the other ones were like concrete, ready to crack. And I got the new lines to run all the way back and an inline fuel filter for the tank. Last thing I need to do is put this crash guard on here, which I guess will take some of the impact uh, in a front end collision so it doesn't rupture the, uh, the fuel pump and hoses and shoot gas everywhere. drive shaft is installed you got the motor mounts done transmission mount done everything cleaned up new clutch new fuel pump with new hoses on it uh, ready to go so a lot of progress this week and I think uh, this is a good time to wrap it up on shot <laughs> take take Sunday off and I'll compile the video and get it edited and everything but if you have any comments please uh, leave the comments uh, anything that you'd like to see that I may have missed, anything that I've done wrong, I appreciate the feedback. And this concludes my 70th. And this concludes my 70th. This concludes my 70th YouTube video, um, pretty much since uh, COVID started March, April of last year. So appreciate everybody's support. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I know you want to and then ring the bell for uh, updates uh, when I release the videos. But uh, this is uh, the conclusion of part three and thanks for watching.